Welcome to Free Your Mind, an experiential daily practice designed to dissolve past programming and expand your awareness of your true self beyond the matrix illusion of fear, lack, and separation. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, close your eyes and let go of all memory and anticipation. Bring your full awareness to the now, this holy instant. The purpose of this practice is to enable you to bring unconditional and unwavering peace with you into any and every circumstance and to heal the stress and turmoil. This is not done through avoidance or seeking a haven of isolation for yourself. You are here to discover that peace is an intrinsic part of you and requires only that you be there in full consciousness to embrace any situation in which you are. And as you practice, you will learn that there is no limit to where you are so that your peace is everywhere as you are. Now take one more deep, slow, full breath in. And as you exhale, allow your body and your mind to relax. And let's begin. There is another way of seeing the world. This is the central theme that weaves together principles 21 through 25 of this series. In today's practice, we'll continue to integrate these next five principles into a complete and coherent thought system that leads beyond the dream matrix of separation to the realization of oneness and your true self. The world I see outpictures a struggle between two powers, life and death, creation and destruction, good and evil. And I think that this world is the objective truth, a fact that I was born into and must accept as reality and simply do my best within this struggle. There is no doubt that a struggle between life and death, love and fear, is playing out in my perception. But just because I see it does not mean that it is real. There is another way of seeing. When I give up my thoughts of judgment, condemnation, an attack, an entirely different perception arises to meet my awareness. Perception is projection, moving from within to the without rather than the other way around. The world my loving thoughts will show me is one with the infinite creator and love itself with love's purpose reflected everywhere, I will behold a world where all things conspire for my good, where trust in life is unquestionably warranted, and where love is the only law that has any reality. Let's practice. I 
I am determined to see things differently. What I see now as I look out at the world are but signs of disease, destruction, and death. Could this be what God created for his beloved child? Could this be love's extension of itself and to itself? The very fact that I see such things is proof that I do not understand God, and therefore I also do not understand myself, His creation. What I see tells me that I do not know who or what I am. I am determined to see the witnesses to the truth in me rather than those which show me an illusion of myself. Many people assume that the world that they see through their lens of perception, the world that truly does outpicture disease, destruction, and death, is a creation of God. And they attest to this that God must have a reason. Perhaps God is punishing Perhaps God is equalizing something. Perhaps God is trying to teach you a lesson through this wrathful life where everything is born only to die. But this cannot be the truth. This is not an expression of love. In any way that we twist it, it cannot be that death is the creation of life. It cannot be that destruction, pain, and suffering is the gift of love onto its creation. Think about something that you put a lot of your heart and creativity into. Perhaps a work project, an art piece, or your own family or children. Would you ever wish disease, destruction, and death to anything with which you contributed to with your heart and your love? And if you would not, then how much more would love itself in its infinite capacity and intelligence also not give suffering, destruction, and death to its creation? I am determined to see things differently. There is another way of looking at the world. For the next minute or so, repeat this idea, contemplate it, and see it clearly. Do this now. What I see is a form of vengeance. The world I see is hardly the representation of loving thoughts. It is a picture of attack on everything and by everything. 
it is anything but a reflection of the love of God and the love of God's creation. And it is my own attack thoughts which give rise to this picture, not God's. My loving thoughts will save me from this perception of the world and give me the peace God intended me to have. When you look out at the world through the lens of the ego thought system, through the lens of your dream character, which is part of the ego matrix, you see a world that is judged entirely based on past impressions. Which past impressions? Primarily the ones that we classify as traumatic. Every moment of trauma is lodged within the perception of the dream character. And as soon as there is any frequency match between the trauma and something that is present in your awareness, a trigger is sent to the subconscious mind and fear floods perception through both energy and the chemicals of stress flooding the body. This is what gives rise to the picture of the world you see. This world is not God's creation. This world is a result of a huge departure from reality and from love, from innocence and from oneness. And yet, this departure is not real because God did not will to split itself into conflicting parts and multiple powers. The world that shines in peace, God's creation as it truly is, remains right here where you are, behind the veil of projection judgment and attack thoughts. What I see is a form of vengeance. Over the next minute or so, repeat this idea, let it sink into your mind, contemplate it, and see it clearly. Do this now. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. Herein lies my freedom and liberation and nowhere else. Without attack thoughts, I could not see a world of attack because perception is projection. As forgiveness allows love to return to my awareness, I will see a world of peace and safety and joy. And it is this I choose in place of what I look on now. You can escape the world 
of multiple powers simply by knowing the truth about it. There is no power second to God, which means that there is no power second to love. If God is not divided against himself and not at war with his own creation, then the world I see has no foundation and no reality. It is a hypnotic mirage propagated by conditioning and repetition, propagated by the broadcast of thought through the dream matrix. Forgiveness, in essence, is a decision to bypass all thoughts that come to you from the past, to bypass them in favor of seeing God's true creation behind the veil of judgment. By piercing the illusion with your knowing and openness to the truth of oneness and the unconditional, infinite, all-embracing love that is the very foundation of creation. For the next minute or so, repeat this idea, contemplate it and allow it to sink into your mind, and most of all, see it clearly. Do this now. do not perceive my own best interests. How could I recognize my own best interests when I do not know who I am? What I think are my best interests would merely bind me closer to the world of illusions. I am willing to follow the inner guide God has given me to find out what my best interests are in truth, recognizing that I cannot perceive them by myself. What you hold as your own best interests now are simply the best interests of this separate dream character. They are interests that are based on filling the lacks that this dream character perceives in his or her life. They are based on working out some unresolved conflicts, paying off some imaginary debts. Are these your best interests? If we compare this experience of life to the experience of playing a video game, we can see that if we were so hypnotized by the video game as to forget ourselves and identify entirely with the video game character, that would be very similar to the predicament in which we find ourselves now. You cannot perceive your own best interests if what you think you are is not what you actually are. So in our example, 
if you were thinking on behalf of the video game character at all times and ignoring your real interests and needs, such as the needs of your body, where would that leave you? What state of health or happiness could you possibly achieve at this level of confusion and misidentification? You would be serving the game character and ignoring your true self entirely. And this is very much what we are experiencing when we identify with the Dream Matrix character. Our dream character becomes all-encompassing and fills our mind entirely with thoughts that seem to serve its best interests. But in truth, the very essence of what we are is entirely obscured and ignored. I do not perceive my own best interests. Over the next minute or so, repeat this idea, contemplate it, allow it to sink into your mind and see it clearly. Do this now. for. To me, while I am identified with my dream character, the purpose of everything is to prove that my illusions about myself are real. It is for this that I attempt to use everyone and everything. It is this that I believe the world is for. Therefore, I do not recognize its real purpose. The purpose I have given the world has led to a frightening picture of it. Let me open my mind to its real purpose by withdrawing the one I have given it and learning the truth about it. The purpose that you have given to everything is to reinforce your sense of identity with your dream character. This is not done consciously, but through conditioning and repetition, we build a case of things I like and things I don't like all the various opinions and positions that I take about circumstances, people, and events in the world, all of the judgments that I have about myself, the world, and others, these in actual application form the anchors that bind me to the world of illusion. When you are willing to let these anchors go, simply by recognizing that they offer you nothing except assured and guaranteed suffering. Then, for the first time, you may be able to see past them 
to ignore the ego's demands that you pay attention to these things, that you form an opinion about these things. And instead, your entire value, your love, your devotion will not be to these things that come and go, but to the ever-present light of love, peace, and consciousness that shines unwaveringly here and now and always. I do not know what anything is for. For the next minute or so, repeat this idea, contemplate it, let it sink into your mind and see it clearly. Do this now. As you come to the completion of this practice period, take a deep, slow, and full breath in. Breathe all the way up to the top and hold it and hold the intention to integrate these principles into your thought system. And as you exhale, relax and release and let the integration take place. And remember to take these principles with you into the rest of your day. Use them in sequence or focus on just one of them that appeals to you most. Repeat it frequently and when you have the time, take a moment sit with your eyes closed and contemplate the truth, the thought system that leads you beyond the dream matrix to the realization of oneness and your true self. subscribe to the channel to continue the journey.